Hey book lovers, welcome to the Bookish Babes podcast featuring Jess and Sam, where we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about all things books. Hi guys, welcome back to the Bookish Babes podcast. We are super excited for this episode. We have an influencer on, finally we're back. Um, We have Shelly from Shelly's Library. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm bad at names but we have Shelly on we're so excited to have her and yeah yeah we're excited to talk books with someone again finally finally <laughs> um but yeah um we're excited for t- this episode and let's just get to it perfect let's bring her on so first question mm-hmm. when did you first start reading and what was the first book that got you into it <sighs> I don't remember when I actually started reading, but I know the first thing I read was Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And then I stopped reading for maybe a year and started reading the Moral Instrument series, I think is what it's called. Uh Um, And then I stopped again for like another three years. And then one day I went on YouTube and I was trying to look at some video, I don't know. And then an ad came up for the after movies. And I was like, wait, this looks kind of interesting. So I Googled it and I found out that there were books and then I started reading that and now here I am, I guess. I feel like that's really common that like we've had a lot of people, I did that too. Like you read, read when you're younger and then it's like, let me yeah. just take like a fat break and then just go back mm-hmm. to it. I did the same thing with After. I watched the movie on Netflix and then I was like, wait, I want to know what happens. And then I realized yeah. there were books. Um, yep, that's what happened with me. But I think my thing is I wanted to read the books first so I can know what happens at the end of the movie. So that's why I read it smart yeah <laughs> uh, for me I read after I was a Harry Styles fan fiction because I was a Wattpad girl so mm. like for me it's very different but everyone's always really like the after books I mean for me I'm kind of biased just because like I don't really like the fact that it was a Harry Styles fan fiction. makes sense yeah I think I read it on Wattpad first and then got the actual books I don't even know why I did that because the actual books were already out yeah you know? I think I ruined it for myself, low-key, reading the Harry Styles version first. So, I yeah. Read, I only read the books, but, I mean, God, those were, like, a journey. So, yeah. long books. <laughs> I only read the first two, and then I was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> okay, so how has what you've read changed from then to now? Well, well, I think after reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid and my reading now, it's kind of Night matured. <laughs> I'm trying to like think of the right word. It's matured a lot. I don't think yeah. like 12 year old me would be reading what I'm reading now. So I think it definitely matured in a lot of ways. So yeah, well, I think you probably matured as a person. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd read the vamp- not Vampire Diaries. What the fuck am I talking about? Diary of a Wimpy Kid right now. So yeah, um, when we're younger, for sure. Sam started early mm-hmm. with stuff, too, so. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, it like, my Wattpad face, you know? Like, when, when yeah, I was that makes in sense. school and, like, everyone was reading Wattpad and I was like, why not? And so they're all on, like, the fantasy side, like, the mm-hmm. Diary of the Wimpy Kid fanfic side, and then, like, I <laughs> in the Omega verse. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like ah uh, well I started off pretty early but I mean I did have my phase where I was like instead of diary of a wimpy kid I was the dork diaries so like mm. that was more of my thing yeah and, like after that you know one harry potter fanfic and then we go into like Hermione, and then it just gets <laughs> it keeps going <laughs> yeah it just you go down go down a hill keep going yeah I don't think I I read Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but it was more my sister, who's younger than me. I I read a lot of the Judy Moody books. Those were my thing. I have heard of them. I don't think I've ever read it. Yeah. I might be a little older than you, so. <laughs> 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 um, okay. So do you strictly read romance or do you read other genres as well? Uh, so it used to be strictly romance. And then recently, like a couple months ago, I started reading poetry a lot because I struggle a lot with my mental health and like just talking about my feelings in general. So I started reading it to kind of understand my feelings through someone else's perspective, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, So yeah, now it's romance and poetry. So yeah. I think that's a really cool 
perspective like to have on that like kind of yeah. be aware like, this is what I'm struggling with let me see if mm -hmm. I can understand it better and I've talked about um that probably on here before too with like we're both writing she's already published but I'm yeah. writing and like she when you're writing like a book it's almost like helpful you put little pieces of yourself in it and it's yeah. like let me see how a character is reacting to this because clearly I'm mm -hmm. not dealing with it the right way how are they going to react and it's it's healthier to see it from a different person's perspective it helps you understand yeah. it better for sure like you never know who it's going to help I think that's the thing you never know who yeah. it's going to impact or like who is going to like feel I guess safe in a way reading something hold on my cat is <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. You're totally fine. I just got a kitten like last week. I left him <gasps> in the room because he would be walking yeah. all over. Yeah, he was like yelling outside my door. I'm like, oh God, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a really cool perspective and like to be able to kind of step outside of yourself and say like, mm -hmm. help me. It's great. Yeah. And then like sometimes when I'm reading romance, like it could get repetitive sometimes. I'm like, okay. I need something else because if I keep reading, I'm going to be in a slump. So like when I need that break, I just start reading poetry. Yeah. What is your favorite trope to read? Like your top three. Ooh. Probably second chance romance. I've been getting into it recently. Well, not recently. I have read probably one book this month. We're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> but second chance romance, grumpy sunshine, and probably marriage of convenience. Yeah. That would definitely be my top three. Those are very like varying tropes too. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where the second chance romance came from. Like I've always enjoyed it, but recently I've been enjoying it a little bit more, I guess. I've never been a big second chance person, but when it's done yeah. like really Correctly. well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. What is one trope you don't like to read and why? In Stella. Is that even a trope? No, yeah, I just, I've, I've said that before. She loves it. I don't. I that. I'm sorry, but I just, I can't read it. Like, I need the buildup of everything. I need the tension to happen so everything can go the right way. Like, why are you falling in love in the first five chapters? That's what I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I think I like it when it's like there's an instant connection, mm -hmm. but not like, it's not like we meet and like we're in love already. Like there's an instant yeah. connection, but I think a push and pull and like a exactly. struggle to get the love part. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Instant love has never really been my thing. Maybe there's just books I haven't read that are actually very good and I just haven't got to them yet. But the ones I have read, not my favorite thing in the world. True. Sam loves I it. Okay. <laughs> Me, it's like, okay. So like I'm a really big age gap girly. So like usually- mm -hmm the loves they have that trope so yeah. alexa riley or like jessa kane so mm -hmm. it's usually like a palate cleanser you know what i mean like if i'm like in a slump i read like a few novellas that are very insta love so then like yeah. i'm tired of it to the point where i'm like now i want a fully developed relationship mm -hmm. but there have been some good insta loves that i've liked but i can understand why people don't like it like i can understand because it it's just like they see each other and they're like oh i'm in love with you and it's a little yeah you know but I personally like the slow burn aspect of it. Like that's probably why. Yeah, I'm trying to think if you've made me read any insta loves that I liked, but I don't know. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe not. Well, <laughs> all of them have weird names too, so I'm not gonna like no. say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam, it's you. It's me. No, I yeah. just said the tropes one. No, what you don't like to read. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I'm just like, I. No. I can see where you're on and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are your top three standalones and why? I'm like looking at my shelf right now. Pack up the moon. I read that book because of uh, Pauline. I saw a TikTok she made and she was like bawling her eyes out and I was like I have to read it that's literally the only reason I got it because she was sobbing and I I like reading books that make me cry I don't know why so that's why it's just so um, sometimes yeah but I feel like I do it too often <laughs> like I don't okay. give myself a break to like just relax like if I find a sad book I will read it right away 
I don't know. Um, and then probably Archer's voice. I read that because of Carrie. Carrie's like one of her favorite standalones is Archer's voice. So I read it because of her and I loved it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what my other one would be. Maybe Marriage for One. Because that's also Marriage of Convenience and it was a slow burn and I ate it up. It was so good. So I think that would be my top three. Yeah. Solid yeah. choice. Okay. What are your top three series and why? Can you guys like guess this? Like, just like, <laughs> okay, do you, think you can guess? I feel like I could guess at least one, one of them. Yeah. I feel like I see a lot of hoop series. It's literally the first thing I thought of. The hoop series by Kennedy Ryan is like my favorite series right now and then also the grip trilogy by her that one was a little bit more well it's not sad they're both kind of sad but I think the grip trilogy it talked a lot about race like she always writes about things that are just like more than romance and I think that's why I enjoy the books so much um and then the Brayshaw series I don't know if you guys have heard of that one but She's it got me back that. into reading yeah <laughs> I just got it her got me back into reading did you like it um yeah I did it's not my favorite but like I really like mm -hmm. I really like the first few books and then I like the last yeah. one um be my Brayshaw that's Captain's book right it wasn't my favorite yeah I think so I like the first three original ones yeah like yeah. Raven and Maddox book, those books are my favorite ones and like the jersey yeah. scene that, that was yes awesome. I thought it was like so mm -hmm. good yeah yeah I think that'll be my my top three those are like my comfort reads. Like I think I've read that series like four or five times. I think I have too. It's like yeah. the first. I feel like um the after series after I read that. I read a couple of standalones and then I read that series because of a friend and I enjoyed it. It was so yeah. Good. It's just like there's something about it. It's really comfortable. Mm -hmm. And Hoops, I, I haven't read the Grip trilogy yet. I've read Hoop series mm -hmm. though, and I loved that series. I yeah. need to read more uh, Kennedy Ryan because her writing is just like something else. Yeah, I think she did poetry. At one point, I, I could be making that up, but I think that's also why I enjoy her writing a lot. Her writing is very, like, poetic in the way that she yeah. writes. And, like, she deals with heavier topics, but she mm -hmm. does them so well. Yeah, and I think that's also why I enjoy it. That's kind of also why I cry a lot. Like, because me, I don't <laughs> like, I don't like reading synopsis. Like, I just, I don't know why. I like going into books blind, and I did that with Longshot. I Ooh. thought it was going to be a fluffy, cute basketball romance. Absolutely not. No, that's no, not, not what it was. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what are your top three authors and then a favorite book of theirs? Candy Ryan, obviously. I think my favorite book by her is Longshot. Um, I was kind of debating between Longshot and Hookshot, but Longshot's always going to be like my number one by her um well, Daniel Allen book one, right? mm -hmm. yeah well, that's book one okay yeah um then Daniel Allen I think my favorite book by her is either her recent one which is guidance or business casual um yeah her books are kind of shorter but like it's something like if you're in a slump that would get you out of it immediately like she's such a good writer I love her books um and recently I started reading Monica Walters I think her name is I started reading her because of Carrie Carrie recommended her books to me um my favorite book by her is deeper than love I think it's called it's part of a series um but her books are also very good I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't read her books earlier but oh well yeah add it to the list to read yeah I got all my recommendations from this podcast <laughs> <laughs> no I really like business casual I haven't read Kennedy Ryan yet but I was with mm -hmm. those like new like um hoop series covers the ones like the cartoon ones they're really yeah. like yeah yeah they're so pretty clothes. they're so pretty I need to like I don't know how I'm gonna get them but <laughs> I want <won't. laughs> <laughs> those are really cute and I like the grip ones too well like the newer ones I think she really yeah ones. so I'm gonna read those soon like once I get the physicals because I've heard mm -hmm. of my like just love hoops and she's like you need to read this and I was like you do need to read it it's really good Okay, so what is an, an, a popular opinion you have when it comes to books? Maybe something you love and others hate or just something people may not agree on? I think 
this is like a weird one but i'd rather read the first line of a book like if i go to a bookstore i'd rather read the first line than read the synopsis i don't i don't know why because like sometimes i'll read the synopsis i'm like mm, it doesn't really sound interesting but then you have colleen hoover who opens her books crazy as hell and you're like what the fuck and you want to read yeah. the rest of it so yeah that's why i like reading that's the first line. So i think hard. yeah i feel like then you really get a feel of the book maybe not all the time but it's worked for me so I'm yeah. a big, go ahead, Sam. Well, yeah, like Verity is like my favorite first line ever. Like I was never yeah. in the world of like, it's always <laughs> like love for like thrillers. I remember reading that first line and I was like, yeah, okay. I can't stop now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big first line person. Like if it's mm-hmm. gonna hook me, like it's gotta hook me right away. Yeah. So exactly. that's smart. And like Colleen Hoover is the queen of like opening lines. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> It's just like, if you have a good first line, I'm probably going to like the book. I feel like it's very like, because I've read so many, it's almost harder now to like grasp my attention that mm-hmm. way. When it does, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. You know it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I lost my thing. Okay. All right. When and how did you get into book talk and bookstagram? Um, sometimes last year, I think. Like for book talk, it was early last year because I always had a TikTok account, but mm-hmm. I never posted about books. I just posted the most random shit. Like at one point I used to post dancing videos. That was really embarrassing. I'm so glad I got rid of that. <laughs> but like I was in that phase. Like I was posting dancing videos like every freaking day. And then I realized I started posting more about books and like I would see more book talk videos in my account. So I was like, why not? Let's see how it goes. And then it, it worked out. And then for Bookstagram, yeah. Bookstagram, it was later last year, like in September, I think. Um, that one was really impulsive because on my main account, I always post book stuff. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm annoying the people who follow me because you don't follow me for book stuff. So I just made it impulsively and I was like, let's see what happens. So yeah, sometime last year. I think it's um, like, that's a common thing with TikTok. Like when I, my sister is younger, so she was always like making the dancing videos and everything mm-hmm. on TikTok. And I, this was probably like the height of COVID. And like, I was like, I I'm too would, old yeah. for this. Like, <laughs> I, I don't need to be on TikTok. I'm not even old, but like, I was like, I don't need to be on this. And then finally, like, maybe like, I don't even know when, a while after I gave in. And then I started seeing the book things on TikTok. I was like, book stuff on here? Okay, now I'm into this. (laughs) Exactly. I think that happened to me too, because I didn't think people would post about book stuff on freaking TikTok. I was like, oh, okay. This is a thing? Great. (laughs) Yeah. And now it's literally like just a huge part of TikTok, I feel like. Yeah. It has affected like authors and things like Mm -hmm. that. Their sales have gone up. Books have been starting to come back into like yeah. modern society and I feel like that's really cool like because I feel like before COVID not a lot of people read and then once COVID came like we were all stuck yeah. in- now people now not everybody wants to read I think it's cool it is a trend. yeah just like, like great we were here first but still <laughs> happy <you're> reading <laughs> yeah for sure okay so are there any upcoming books you're super excited for uh yeah Kennedy Ryan's book coming out soon. I think it's called, I always forget, Bef- Before I Let Go. Her book is coming out pretty soon. And I'm really excited for it. And then Lauren Asher's new book for the um, Dreamland Billionaire series. I'm so excited for Cal's book, dude. Oh my God. Me too. Because I, I feel like he's going to be my favorite brother. I feel yeah. like he's going to be my favorite brother. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Declan is like going to be hard to beat yeah I don't know I'm I definitely do think I'm a cowgirl though we'll see how it goes yeah we'll see but I'm excited I think Iris I don't think anyone's gonna be able to like top Iris I've never no. loved him no. as much as I love Iris and like I saw Kennedy Ryan's like new like cover for her new book it's stunning mm-hmm. it's I really pretty it's, I think it's my favorite cover that I've seen from her which mm-hmm. has like really cool ones now so yeah Okay, if you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? I've been thinking about this question for like three days and I still don't know. 
<laughs> this is but, the hardest for everyone. <laughs> I don't know. I was talking to Carrie about it. I was like, Carrie, if you can like see me being a fictional character, who would it be? And she was like, Lotus from Hookshot because I wow. love fashion and I love clothes and she's a fashion designer. So I think if I can be anybody living in New York, I think it's being her. Being a fashion designer. I think, Honestly, yeah, I definitely like, think it would be Lotus. Honestly, just talking to you, you give me Lotus vibes. Do I actually stop? I'll start crying. Don't say that. <laughs> no, I love Lotus. She's that, their book is my favorite. Keenan and Lotus are just like mm-hmm. top tier. Yeah. Okay. If you could only read one book or series for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Probably the Grip Trilogy. Like, it's hard to choose between the Grip Trilogy and Hoop Series. But I definitely think grit, just because like I can read their story over and over again and not get tired of it. Like it's such I've a beautifully that. written story. Pardon? I've heard that from other people too. Yeah. Like that it's just easy to keep reading. Mm-hmm. It is. Like you'll cry in the last book, but it was really good. It was worth it. Oh, I need to read it. You do. And when you do, update me because I, I want to relive it. I will, for sure. Good. <laughs> um as an influencer is there a book a fellow book influencer that you absolutely love to watch or just love their account or content I can't read today uh, <laughs> um Julia I don't know if you guys know who Julia is Julie she makes the prettiest aesthetic videos on TikTok and I love them same with Carrie the reason I started making aesthetic videos was because of Carrie um because I saw her videos she makes like more aesthetic videos on like diverse books and stuff so she's the reason I actually got into more diverse books because I saw her videos um and then for Instagram Carly Carly takes really pretty photos and they're just so stunning and I love them and then same with Ariana um so I have two for bookstagram and then two for TikTok but like those four people are probably my favorite to like look at every day love that Mm-hmm. can we like talk about your instagram feed though like, i know right so amazing. <laughs> like i literally looked at it for the first time i was like holy crap this girl knows what she's doing it's so pretty like i just wing it because recently i've been in the biggest content like slump ever like i have no idea what to post no idea and like i've always had like a darker theme like when i first started uh bookstagram but then i changed it to a lighter feed and i really loved it but now I'm stuck and I'm like, shit, I don't know what to post now. So, <laughs> but it looks pretty sitting there. But yeah, I'm really good. Was. They were trying to figure out what to post. <laughs> no, it's very, very pretty. And you do Thank photography you. too, right? I do. Yeah, I go to school yeah. for photography. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You can definitely tell. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it's showing. I'm glad that my education is paying off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, here I am, like, laying like a fake plant out and <laughs> taking a picture of my phone I'm like this will do <laughs> you can tell for sure <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> okay so what social media platform do you prefer most and like why mm, probably Instagram like outside of the whole book thing Instagram is just funny like the memes I have on my explore page are just funny so I, I think definitely Instagram and then like on the book side of it I like seeing like my friends post and stuff like that and like what they come up with every day um so yeah I definitely think Instagram okay so we absolutely love your profile as we were just saying you. and how you incorporate photography and like your own unique aesthetic to it so mm-hmm. with that said what type of content do you like to create the most um I think with TikTok, I love making aesthetic videos because I like seeing like the end piece of it, like how it turned out. Um, I used to enjoy making like funnier content, but then I, I couldn't think of anything. So I was like, okay, whatever. Um, And then with TikTok, not TikTok, Instagram, um, I liked posting like quote dumps because like I said, I read poetry. So I like posting like certain like quotes and stuff that I read. Um, Because me personally, I think it's, I like it, so I'm going to post it, but I also think it's, like, something that people might want to, I don't know, see or something that someone might need that day, 
so I'll post it. So I definitely think posting more quote stuff on my bookstagram is like where I lean to. And if I can incorporate photography into it, then I'm, I'm going to do it. I love seeing the quote dumps. I'm like a big, like, that's my main thing on TikTok too. Even if you mm-hmm. like post a quote and I like it, I'm in. Yeah. I love seeing the quote dumps. I've seen, uh, who does them really well too? Um, Steph, Steph story. She always posts. She does. Yes, yeah, she does. And like her annotations as well. Same with Julia. Julia yeah. also does very pretty annotations yeah. and they look great. Yeah, I'm like not that creative. So when I see other people, <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, and there's people that like draw their books. Like for me, it would just be like yeah. wiggly lines. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm too scared to underline. Like, I'm going to cross yeah. the words out by accident. Like, <laughs> no, I can't even like annotate like the quote pretty. Like, I can't even do that. Like, imagine like drawing, like, you know, like how they like yeah. straight highlight lines. I'm like, oh my God, your hand is so like still. Like, yeah, good. Not yeah. me. I use a little ruler. That's yeah. as much as you're going to get from me when it comes down to annotating. Just highlighter and a tab, and that's it. That's as far as I'm going to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you're, I just, I can't do it. I like, <laughs> I have no patience. I'll get annoyed with everything in like five seconds. <laughs> I was one of those people at school that I had like the paper and like, if it did look right, I would rip out the paper and then throw it in the trash. You know, I was too, I still am. Like to this day, like when I'm in school, I'm taking notes and it doesn't look, like I'm not satisfied with it, I will get rid of it and start all over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I, don't I have know why. my iPad. That's why I have my iPad because I can just like hey. it because like yeah. know, I'll be wasting like trees like <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> like I get so annoyed with it that I just have to throw it yeah. away. Yeah, you're both better than me. I never took notes, so <laughs> <laughs> we we just tried to pass here. <laughs> yeah, just wing it. Yeah, <laughs> I I passed. for we graduated. We're good enough. okay so how has being an influencer for the book community changed your life Mm, I think definitely meeting new people like I've met some of my best friends because of reading and because of joining the community so I think that's one of the biggest things just like being able to like talk to people every day about things that you enjoy um and like Carrie Carrie's became one of my best friends in such like a short amount of time it was crazy to me because I didn't know I could meet someone on the internet like that. My mom always told me not to talk to strangers, but shit, here I am. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, 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 I had, like, tons of, like, I already had, like, when I started, like, messaging people on Instagram, like, Mm-hmm. She's doing this because like I literally <laughs> this is gonna be like so like 2000s like little me but I remember when I was on like movie star planet and I was like messaging random oh people and then my mom like got pissed at me and then, <laughs> you know that's like every time I would text someone door would be like this would go through my head and I was like yeah because I'm meeting Carrie pretty soon and I just like I think about it like once a week I'm like my mom told me not to talk to strangers why am I literally going to meet a stranger I know on the internet like I don't know. <laughs> it's like different. I feel like I was just talking to someone about this. It was like, I feel like book people are just like more trusting. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's just easier to trust each other because like, I don't know, like who's going on the internet and like fake and read in the type of books that we read. Yeah. I, don't, I, I think don't, you see yeah. that like, every day. Right. So it's like, yeah. And also like, we're all pretty open, like, I yeah. like everyone's talking on their stories and like, it, mm-hmm. it's very like, I don't know it's not as scary but yeah definitely, like friendships that have come out of it have been mm-hmm. like I mean I live in South Florida she lives in Mexico like we never would have met like we <laughs> it's just like it's really crazy like the things yeah it opens happen. a lot of doors to be honest yeah definitely mm-hmm. like I don't know I just feel like it's really cool because but like I feel like if you see a profile you can tell if they're not like genuine or like yeah if mm-hmm. it's yeah. like not a real profile or like yeah they're like review a book and it's not even like what the book's about so Mm -hmm. those types of things you can tell a lot yeah yeah you can tell those types of things and so I think it's easier to like meet people like my mom was like why do you want to go to a book convention with a bunch of strangers Mm -hmm. I was like because I want to go to a book convention (laughs) she's like like you know (laughs) you don't know like they could be murderers and I'm like okay then I die full of readers (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no no we're not murderers we just like them here yeah. um <laughs> okay so uh, social media can be toxic at times and the romance community has been known to get plenty of hate 
So is that something you've had to deal with at all? And if yes, how do you handle it? I have to deal with it twice. Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think the first time, the first time I was arguing with people left and right. And then the second time I'm like, okay, it's going to blow over in two days. And it did. Like, I feel like there's always going to be just somebody who doesn't agree with what you're doing or what you're saying and you just have to not let that affect you and I think the first time when it happened I let it affect me um but there's always going to be somebody judging you for what you read or what you don't read just if you're enjoying it that's all you need yeah and I think a lot of the time people are looking for reactions when you give them exactly oh great Mm -hmm. argue but if you don't give them one you're entertaining them exactly who cares Okay, so this is the last question to close us out. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite and least favorite thing about being an influencer for the book community? Mm. And going back to what I said before, just like being able to meet new people, I think that would be my favorite thing. And just being able to openly talk about something you enjoy with other people and not having to feel like yeah. judged or anything like that. Um, my least favorite thing though is like just having to be cautious all the time with what you say. Like, someone's always gonna like I said not agree with you because of like what you say because they don't like your opinion I think that would be my least favorite thing because why am I being cautious about my opinion you know yeah like, no, you have every right yeah to exactly so yeah I think everything else has been okay and then like being content slump that's not really my favorite thing either but there we are yeah no I think I think everyone's gonna always not like something that you're doing or something that you're saying. Like you can never please yeah. anyone. Exactly. Never. If oh, you're I enjoying think. it, then I think that's all that really matters is that you're enjoying what you're doing. Fuck everybody else. For sure. And like, as far as like, you know, what we read obviously isn't like a conversation starter, but mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I feel like this community has made it so like people can be a lot more open about it. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's not as like, taboo I don't think as it was a couple yeah. of years ago mm-hmm. and like yeah, a lot more people are reading now so it's like easy stuff to talk to yeah, exactly I've been seeing a lot more people who strictly read literary fiction maybe reading a rom-com that's spicy or mm-hmm. like things like that like people are opening up more to like different yeah. things and I like and I remember like me like with my Wattpad days like hiding what I read like being super ashamed of it and like, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, I'm writing it and my parents, even though, like, though, yeah, daily, um, <laughs> you know, we're here and like, I think it's cool. We're having a good time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Living life. Living our best lives. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, that's all the questions we have. That was Shelly, also known as Shelly Library. We are so excited we have her, had her on. She's such a cool person. We love her. She's so nice. Um, her account is like literally beautiful so make sure you go check out her social media like stunning um and check out our social media and then check back next week because we should have another influencer on it hopefully if knock on wood if things work out so <laughs> but stick around next week see what's going on and thanks for listening yeah we'll see you guys next time today was really fun we got we actually talked to someone yay finally we're back (laughs) (laughs) okay so we'll see you guys next time thank you guys for listening or watching bye that was the bookish babes podcast make sure to check back every wednesday for more and head over to our instagram for updates thank you for listening